Teaching is my passion, but I often wonder why am I still teaching the same way people have been teaching for over 75 years? I think something has to give. I think it's time for the school paradigm to shift. But I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. As a teacher, I've learned many things, and one of them is if you want to connect with your students, if you want to connect with your audience, you have to tell a pretty good story. So here's my story. I'm a very happy man. I've been able to travel and do many things, things that I never would have dreamed of doing when I was in high school. I've been able to search for lost fishermen in the Bering Sea in the Gulf of Alaska. I've been able to board and confiscate vessels illegally attempting to bring drugs into the United States. I've been able to work with the DEA eradicating marijuana from the Hawaiian Islands. I've been to the summit of every mountain in the fine state of New Hampshire. I've tracked the big five in South Africa. I've snowboarded in Switzerland. I've hiked in Iceland. And I've snorkeled with sharks in the Galapagos. And I've been lucky enough to go sailing the British Virgin Isles. And my family and I have done a lot of camping in our national parks. But through all of these adventures, the greatest thing has been the people that I've met and the friends that I've made along the way. These friends include entrepreneurs who see weaknesses in computer security as a business opportunity. Engineers who show the same love and appreciation for ceramic engineering as they do their daughters. And lawyers who constantly teach me how to be a better listener, to show more empathy, and to be more compassionate. All are great friends who care deeply about me, my family, and this teaching profession, which I've loved doing for 27 years. I found the silver lining of COVID. COVID has actually allowed me to connect with my friends more than I ever have in the past. I'm not a phone person, but I have become one. In all of our conversations, things seem at one point or another to turn to, so what are you teaching your students today? Two conversations stand out. The first is with a friend who lives down in Washington, DC. He works at the Congressional Budget Office, and they are also a consultant for many of the big universities in the DC area. Does a lot of interviews to see who's a good candidate, good fit for their school. In our conversation, uh, one thing leads to another, and he asks, of course, what am I teaching today? And I jump right at my North Carolina State Math Standards. And I start telling them about how I'm getting kids pumped up for those end of course tests. <laughs> and when I'm done with that, I'm moving on to the SAT and ACT. And, he, uh, and then he says, honestly, when was the last time you used any of that outside of the class? So I became a little defensive and I said, well, it's not always about the material. It's sometimes it's just the process of learning something new, doing something that's challenging. So then I go on the offensive and I say, so as your admissions consultant, what do you look for in students? What are the things that you're looking for? And he says, well, of course, we start off with classes and grades, and we quickly realize that most kids, there aren't many differences there. So I go looking at their schedules, and I look at how many free periods they have in a day. And then I start looking at the unique and interesting electives they're taking in. How are they pushing themselves outside their comfortable limits? These are all things I never would have thought of. Second conversation is with a friend who is a senior program manager for Microsoft out in Denver. And of course, we go through the same pleasantries, conversations, things start, and I can see the conversations starting to go the same way. So I go on the offensive, and I ask, so as a high school teacher, what can I do to bring you the greatest employee? What are the things you look for? 
And he comes down with three. First off, he says, encourage your students to take as many art classes as they possibly can, because art is one of the only areas where they try out their creativity. He then says, computer science. Make sure that before they leave high school, every kid is at least introduced to computer science, because there is not going to be a job available to them in the future where they aren't going to need some sort of computer work. And lastly, he talks about readers. Give me those kids who always have their face in the book. Kids that read for pleasure have a huge advantage over those who don't. I see a huge disconnect between what schools are prioritizing and what employers want. Employers today don't really care what you know. They, like the rest of us, have figured out that just about everything can be Googled. There's a new kind of smart today, and employers want it. Employers want kids who are creative, kids who can persevere, who are creative that, uh, let me think how this is gonna, supposed to go, all oh, they change their mouth. Kids who have unique interests and um, can take what they know and turn it into something tangible. Kids that aren't always right, but can find value in failure. Kids that have a large number of interests that they're turning into their passion. They have the ability to iterate their work and revise it to create something new, something different, something that is totally better. Being a data-driven person, I've been doing a lot of reading and realize that there are a bunch of folks demanding that secondary schools make creativity a priority. That education doesn't merely need to be reformed, but that it needs to be totally transformed. With so many incredibly intelligent and talented people all saying the same thing, that schools need to teach differently, why is it so hard for us to change the paradigm? It's time for us to put the standardized test aside and to get kids more involved in their education. Kids need to engage, not because of compliance, but because of choice, ownership, empowerment, and deeper learning. What we as educators need to do is we have to give kids the responsibility of figuring out why they have to do certain things. Why they have to, what problems, challenges, and inquiries are they concerned with? And what knowledge do they need to be able to get from us to get there? And then give them time to design, to make, and to create. All this can be done to a structured learning experience where kids are taught a thoughtful design process where they'll learn how to answer questions, solve problems, and make decisions. And throughout the process, they'll journal, they'll have uh, periodic uh, check-in conferences with a trusted adult. At some point, they're going to take their finished product and present it to a true, authentic audience. And at the end of it all, we'll give them a chance to to reflect on what they've done and assess on how well they've produced their product. Every one of their projects would first have to pass what we call the rule of thirds. Are you passionate? What is your skill acquisition? And who does it benefit other than you? Like I mentioned, I'm a very lucky man. I work at the Franklin School of Innovation. We have our habits of scholarship. They are a huge part of who we are. They're in our DNA. All we have to do is move them to the front of the class and give them the time and attention that they need. It's what the real world desires. It's, what the, it's the right thing to do. It's the new smart. Let's help our students find their passion. Let's help our students be more creative Let's help our students write their story.